pharmaceutical company. Um, I'm currently a senior clinical trial management associate. Um, I've been working in the industry for about seven years or so. Um, I moved to London when I was 13, um, originally from Nigeria. Um, my hobbies include baking, reading, uh, I like playing tennis but I haven't played for a really long time. But that is one of my hobbies. Okay. Uh, so essentially I am a project manager. So I work for a pharmaceutical company and I help to um, set up and manage um, some of the clinical trials that they have ongoing. Um, majority of my role involves liaising with our vendor partners so we have vendors that uh, provide services and also help us to essentially run those clinical trials so um, i look after five countries on um, a couple of the studies that i'm working on at the moment so um i would just i liaise with those um our cro partner on a day-to-day -day basis so if there's any safety issue that comes up if there's an issue with um say investigation of products at the site, at the pharmacy, if there's an issue with um, just anything essentially. There's so much that can happen um, you know, when you're running a clinical trial. So my job is to work with our vendor partner for those countries that I'm assigned to, to make sure everything runs smoothly and if there are any issues that everything's resolved in a timely manner. I also um, conduct oversight visits. So every now and again, I would um, I would travel out to one of our hospital sites in one of the countries that I manage and um, conduct an oversight visit with the CRA and just make sure that the trial is being run at the hospital as we expect it to. Um, I also liaise with the CRAs through the clinical trial managers at the, um, the CRO that we work with. So, you know, the CROs, the CROs go out there and they conduct their visits and um, when they write their reports, one of my responsibilities is also to review those reports and you know, just make sure that if there are any issues at that site, um, they're being looked at and then being resolved. Um, I also help to review study documents, so if there's been um, an update to an informed consent form, I would have to review that and make sure that um, it's a, you know, ready for submission or if any, any changes are needed, then I will feed that back to um, our, the CRA that we work with again and you know, they would make updates to that document. I wanted to be a doctor when I was much younger, you know, I was obsessed with medicine um, and manage, so I'm managing parents. Um, but so I applied to medical school, I didn't get in, and I decided to study biomedical science and my original plan was to reapply for medicine when I graduated. But after graduating, um, I just decided that wasn't for me anymore. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I knew that the, my pharmacology modules were the ones that I enjoyed the most when I, you know, was studying biomedical science. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't quite sure, you know, how I wanted to get to, say, a pharmaceutical company and work in the industry. So for a few months, I actually worked for a recruitment company and they specialised in hiring people for pharmaceutical companies, you know, people that do different things, you know, um, be it medical affairs or clinical trial management, just different roles. So I did that for about eight months and... I knew it wasn't for me because I just don't have that personality so for recruitment or sales but it was really interesting because it kind of gave me um, an idea of what the industry was like and the different roles that are available and I obviously you know I got to meet new people and make new contacts so I did that for eight months and then I decided to apply for a job at the MHRA so that's the um, medicines and healthcare products regulatory agency so they're like the UK equivalent of the FDA and they oversee um, all the clinical trials and all the all drugs that are basically marketed in the UK, they're responsible for reviewing all that data, making sure that um, the drugs are fit for use and that they're safe as well. So um, I got a job there and I was there for 18 months. And it, during my time there, I worked for the pharmacovigilance department. So that's the safety department. They're basically responsible for making sure that all the drugs on the market and um, they're basically safe for people to use and um, they're constantly reviewing the risk and benefit of the drug and making sure that you know, everything is as it should be. So while I was there, um, I was involved in the yellow card scheme. So that's a scheme where patients and doctors can report any adverse events that you know, occur um, and we basically collect all that information and we would use that to assess if the um, risk benefit profile of that drug is still positive. 
and if there's any information that's that wasn't currently on the um, summary of product characteristics or the patient information leaflet, if any additional information needed to be added on there, or you know ultimately if a certain drug needed to be like taken off the market, although obviously that would be something really severe would have to happen for that to take place. Um, so I worked there for 18 months and then I decided to move into clinical research. So after the MHRA, I moved to a CRO called MedPace and I worked there for just over four years. So from the initial two years, I was a project coordinator in-house. So just assisting the clinical trial managers on a day-to-day -day basis and helping them manage clinical trials. Um, so doing all the admin, like setting up the meetings, taking meeting minutes, making sure all the sites had their supplies, managing um, vendors, also helping the CRAs to get organized, um, liaising with sites as well. So just helping the trial managers um, acting as their backup when they weren't there. So essentially, if my PM was on holiday, it got to a stage where I'd be able to like lead the project and feed back to our sponsors, give them updates on how the um, studies are progressing, any issues that had come up at sites, any, you know, just updates on say regulatory submissions, contracts, ETC. So I did that for two years and I, then I thought it'd be really beneficial to have some experience of what it was like to actually be at site. So liaising with the site staff, your PIs, your pharmacists, you know, what actually happens at site when you're running a clinical trial, I thought that'd be really beneficial. So I became a CRA, so a clinical research associate, and I did that for just over two years. And that was really, really interesting. Um, it was really good to have first-hand experience of, you know, what it's like to run a clinical trial. Um, yeah, that was really, really interesting. Um, and after that, I moved to academia for a year. So I worked at Imperial College London as a clinical trial coordinator. Um, that was within oncology, early phase oncology. I hadn't worked in oncology at all while I was a CRA, and that's something that I always wanted to do. Um, so I decided to move to academia for a year, and I also hadn't worked in a research environment before. So I just thought it'd be really interesting and to you know just give myself a different sort of experience. So um, I worked in Imperial College for a year and I was working with two academics during, doing early phase studies. So essentially I was the main contact for their studies and I did everything from, you know, set up to um, performing the site initiation visits for the external sites to setting up the electronic database. So helping to set up um, the EDC system that they use for their trials and making sure all the supplies were there and just liaising with our external sites as well. And because these were investigator-led studies, I also liaised with our sponsors. Um, so giving them updates on where we were with the trial, how many patients we had, how recruitment was going, if there had been any safety events, making sure that um, there was enough stock in the pharmacy, so the stock of the investigational product that we received from the pharmaceutical company. Um, so yeah, that was a really interesting role because um, I hadn't worked in academia before. So essentially, I got to do a lot because I think I think when you work in industry, everything is everything's really structured in a certain way, but it's not quite like that in academia. But then that was a good experience because I got to be involved in different things, like doing the EDC build, for example. You get to see, you know, how they incorporate all those edit checks in there, and you know what what kind of work goes into doing that. So I did that for a year, and then um, after that, I moved to the company where I am now. So I'm currently working for pharmaceutical company doing project management. <laughs> I think you should definitely be getting as much experience as you can um, in as many different therapeutic areas as you can as well. And I also think it's important to network because I feel like these days it's not just, it's not just what you know, sometimes opportunities come through who you know as well. Um, I definitely want to get into a leadership position, so um, I definitely see myself still working in the pharmaceutical industry, but um, you know, hopefully at a much higher position, say global CTM, you know, maybe thinking about a director position one day. Um, but you know, I think yeah, my future is in the next three to five years. I definitely see myself, you know, being in a higher position in the pharmaceutical industry with you know more experience and hopefully leading a team. vision of Unite really resonated with me because I think um, there are opportunities out there but you know when you're just starting out 
you may not know about them. You don't know what's available to you. You don't know how to get to a certain place. You just don't know, essentially know what's out there. And I think it's really important that, um, you know, we're able to um, spread the message and open doors for people who, who might, you know, and may not necessarily know what's out there. Um, I think, um, you know, there's loads that you can do in the science and tech field. And um, for me, coming from, say, a minority background, um, there aren't many people that I could feel like I can go and talk to and ask about their journey, what they've done, because, you know, they're just not many people who have that experience. So I think it's really important that I do my bit to help someone else coming after me. I've got, you know, young nephews and nieces who might be thinking about, you know, certain careers in certain like pharmaceutical company or um, the tech industry, and they might not know what's available. They don't, might not know what kind of roles are out there. Even if they know, they might not know how to get there. Okay, what do I need to do to get to a certain place? And I just think if I can help one person to achieve their dream by sharing my story and what I've done and what's helped me to get to where I am now, then I think, you know, I'd be happy with that. So yeah, I think the vision um, of Reunite, like I said, it resonated with me and um, it's something that I thought, yeah, this is a great idea and I want to be part of it.